Hey, would you look what time it is? Yep, it's time to do my yearly accounts, which means I'm procrastinating and making another video. It's time for another retro controversial video. We're gonna have a look at another video game that was either banned or people at the time thought it should have been. And this time it's a video game that was controversial because it was a little bit too bloody and gory. Get those pearls clutched. Do you need me in here now? Oh, yeah, yeah, come in. <clears throat> Octavius King, for handing in your tax returns late, you will be subjected to torture by me, a representative of the HMRC, HM Revenue and Customs. Why are you wearing a cat suit? Uh, this is just standard HMRC uniform. Do you need me to take it off? I've got a suit in the car. Oh no, 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 keep it on. It'll be good for the thumbnail. You are going to need to play the arcade game and the NES port. <laughs> Chill out. Hey, predictable lazy script writing. Or you could just pay the hundred pound fine. A hundred quid? Do you know how many bottles of wine I can buy with that? Bring on the game. Chiller was released in 1986 for arcade only, and it is absolutely brutal. I mean, mega brutal. You know, I was really quite little when I was first exposed to some not kid-friendly video games. You know, Resident Evil, Nightmare Creatures, that kind of thing. It scared the hell out of me at the time, but you know, I turned out okay. <laughs> what? Nothing. Now, just in case, this video does come with a slight epilepsy warning, because the games we're going to look at in this video are light gun games, and the screens flash white to interact with the light guns. But I have done my absolute hardest to move every single frame of bright white that might set someone off. And there's more white flashing in these games than there is at spring break, so... Yeah, it took me ages. Chiller was made by Exidy. Yes, the Exidy also known for making the Exidy Sorcerer. This sensual symphony in beige. Oh, just look at that thing. Oh, yeah, give me a minute. Exidy made a bunch of light gun game arcades and Exidy's cabinets were especially sensual because they featured, like Chiller does, digitized sound. I do love a game that talks to me. Uh, Was that you? No. Well, it might have been actually. I'm packed into the suit quite tightly. Uh, uh, all right, come on, that was pretty sexy, right? That was pretty sexy. I'm gonna need another minute, I'm sorry. This game only has four levels on it, but remember, it was an arcade game, so that's not unusual. You're supposed to find a bunch of secrets in each level to complete them. Gotta do that before the timer runs out. All right, I'm ready to be disgusted. Let's have a look at level one. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just not very good with the sight of blood. Oh, what? You went to Five Guys and didn't bring me anything? Typical government worker. Holy mother of bobbins. Look at the absolute scenes in here. What have I wandered into? Because if I interrupted something, I'll go. I'll leave right now. Don't let me interrupt this party. In a usual light gun game, you'd be shooting baddies, but in this one, you're just flaying innocent people to pieces. This poor guy here, he's chained onto the wall. This lad's in a vice. This lass who, I'll be honest, she doesn't look massively bothered. Relatable, actually. A shelf of heads? Who does that? Who just puts heads on a shelf? Let's shoot them. Oh my god, this is so gross. So brutal. And the screaming is pretty horrible, honestly. I genuinely feel a bit bad about this. I'm just messing up innocent members of the public. Guessing I wouldn't feel quite so bad about this if I ever worked in customer-facing retail during the Christmas months. I can definitely recommend this game to people in the service industry. You can also interact with all this stuff by shooting levers and the like. Let's decapitate this poor bastard and put him out of his misery. <laughs> Oh, 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 this is so brutal! You won't be screaming at a cashier about expired coupons anymore. The world's a better place without you, buddy. Level two. Whoa, is that a river of blood? Jesus, reminds me of the last time I pulled off a hangnail. 
Who is throwing out so much blood it's making the sewer system red? Who owns this place? I can't work out when this game is supposed to be set, but I think at some point the council is likely gonna be like, hey, we noticed your water bill is sky high and all the taps of all the houses in the area cry blood every now and again. Can, can we just come and inspect your property for what are clearly building regulation violations at all? Oh, hey, look, the torturer has been kind enough to keep this woman's bra on while she's being tortured. Well, we wouldn't want those evil lady nipples showing, would we? In a game where you literally shoot people's intestines and watch them splat out all over the shop. No lady nipples. That's too far. Holy crap, there's a crocodile living in that river of blood. Is this that mad one from Chubby Gristle? Now I think of it, it would make sense if this place is the basement of a multi-story car park. It does look like one that I saw in Manchester once. Third level. Ooh, it's a super spooky hallway. I do not care for that man. Bloody hell, did you see that thing? What kind of ghost is just a giant head that slowly moves towards you while looking like it's been battered by an Argos catalogue? That wasn't in Scooby-Doo. None of this game was in Scooby-Doo, apart from the Blood River and the intestines. So as you've seen by now, there's little bits and bobs you'll find that are meant to be secrets in each level. Sometimes they're found by shooting a bit of a wall that looks a bit odd or whatever. All of them add up to reveal an image on the title screen. So even though there's only four levels, it does still have a big replay value, which of course is important for a coin-munching arcade game. Those first two levels where you're shooting off innocent people's legs would have been played again and again by kids. Oh, admit it, you were a vicious little bastard at that age too. The final level is a graveyard. Oh, classic, you've got to have a graveyard for the super spookiness. Graveyards are where all the dead people live. You know, I don't get how there's always a graveyard in spooky games like ghosts haunting them and stuff. When I die, I'm not going to haunt the place that I'm buried. I'm going to haunt all of my exes. Yes, yeah, screw you, Horace. You about to get haunted. In, I don't know. 15 to 20 years time, probably, judging by my health at this stage. Oh, there's that lass with the bra again. Where did you get that bra? I want one that can still hold my breasts after my shirt has been shot off. I wonder if I can shoot the bra off. Oh, uh, don't look, don't look. A lady nipple. Oh my God, those are some of the worst video game breasts I have ever seen in my life. Why are the nipples halfway up her chest? Let me just put her out of her misery. Jesus, I feel like a bastard. Oh, hey everyone, the body parts man is here. Bring your pocket money, kids. Okay, give me two hands and a flake, plus sprinkles. What, two pound 30? That's an arm and a leg. Not literally, because I asked for two hands and a flake. Well, at the time in the mid 80s, Chiller would have been seen as really bloody. The creators of this game at Exidy were clearly trying to make something shocking. And even by today's standards, this is all a little bit grim. So grim that a lot of American arcades weren't entirely keen on buying it. Remember, this was only a few years after Custer's Revenge caused so much controversy. In any case, Exidy would end up selling out a few years anyway, and the arcade cabinet business was starting to wind down in America, so, you know, why not? just pull out all the bloody stumpy stops. I would, I'd go mental. Probably because a game like this could sell simply by being controversial, this game was made into an NES version. It was released unlicensed, obviously. Business Wire of New York reported in 1989 that Share Data Inc. had signed a master licensing agreement with Exidy. This would give Share Data permission to take Exidy's arcade games and make them into the console versions. The then president of Share Data, Michael Williams, reportedly said, Although we are not an Nintendo licensee and it's unlikely we will become an authorized Nintendo publisher. <laughs> you can say that again. We're aggressively looking at various alternative strategies to exploit these cartridge rights. Brazen as hell. And I kind of like it. Dead people are cool. Nah, that's exactly what a dead person would say. D did you zombies make a video game? To be honest, these guys here look like they know how to party. I want to go on a night out with them. I just need to remember to bring the air freshener. Which is standard for a night out in Yorkshire, if I'm honest. Now, this is a really sound arcade port. I really enjoyed playing it. I found it on a bootleg multicart and played it all the way through and had a very nice time. All right, so the main difference, aside from obviously the graphics, is that this game doesn't start off 
with that gross torturing level. Instead, we start off in the graveyard and we're about to work up to that gory goodness. And as you can see, it is recognisable, certainly. Obviously, the NES is much more limited, but technically this is uh, impressive because there's a bunch of targets on the screen at once. Here they all are. This is how the NES light gun works. Again, I've tried to clip out the white flashing so no one has an epilepsy attack. And yes, it took me ages, thank you very much. Here's that lass with the breasts that were drawn by someone who has never seen breasts. This time though, I can't seem to pull her clothes off. There isn't really any full nudity in this version at all. Not that I was really counting what the arcade version showed us as nudity. That was more a punishment for us than a reward. As in the arcade version, we do get to see a bunch of people in their undies, so if you're into that kind of thing, you're catered for, I guess. In this one, there's no cowled person pushing a cart of fresh body pieces. Instead, there's this woman with a pram. Well, you know, if she has a baby in that pram, then she is still technically pushing a cart full of fresh body pieces, right? I mean, babies stay fresh until, I don't know, about the age of two when they become a toddler. After that, you need to check the best before date. I don't know where this joke is going, I'm gonna stop it. What? I stopped the joke before it got weird? Why change the body parts guy into someone pushing a pram? Look, you can shoot the absolute bobbins out of her. You complete and utter monster. Keeps taking the hit and coming back for more. She is gonna have this midnight stroll and bullets are not gonna stop her. Absolute meat market, this lass. Just steak. In all four levels, the changes are small. Like, that horrifying face isn't quite as horrifying this time. Although I'd still be unhappy to bump into him on a dark night while taking my friggin' baby for a walk past the Walmart version of The Walking Dead. The river of blood in this one does not look like a river of blood, does it? It looks more like that lake of chocolate in Willy Wonka's factory. And this place does look like the basement of the kind of utter mentalist who gives away his entire business to a kid who found a shiny bit of paper in a chocolate bar. I'm watching you, Wonka. You are not a good role model. It's not nearly as satisfying to shoot the limbs off people in this version. They just explode into a big blob of blood and guts. If you want some good gore, you have to go for the arcade version. But I did enjoy this version. I think, do I like it? Wow, am I reviewing a game that I actually like? This feels weird. Almost filthy somehow. The thing is, Exidy had already dabbled in controversial video gaming years earlier, when they released the arcade game Death Race in 1976. If you want to play this one today, it's been emulated excellently by fabslab.itch.io. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you so much for making this so that I can experience one of the most controversial and bloodthirsty video games ever made. Oh, Deirdre, do you see what's happening here on this video game? Well, it's so bloody and bloodthirsty, little Timmy's going to turn into a serial killer. Well, what can I say? The 70s were a trip. I'm surprised people survived them. All right, okay, look, remember, at this time, 1976, video games were still very much for kids, and we all know kids have wild imaginations, so I'm sure they would have been totally radicalised by the image of this thing that looks vaguely like a car, running over these things that look vaguely like people that turn into what vaguely looks like a crucifix. I don't get it. Death Race is actually a kind of remake of Exidy's earlier game, Destruction Derby, but with death. Exidy never claimed the game was based on the contemporary film Death Race 2000, by the way, although I suppose the unintended association with the film might have boosted it along a bit. The things you're meant to be running over are meant to be gremlins, not people. But that did mean that, because kids are creepy bastards, it did very well at the arcades until some adults noticed that kids were having a nice time and decided to put a stop to that shit. 
According to the Chicago Tribune in 1976, the National Safety Council described Exidy's death race game as insidious, morbid, gross, and sick, sick, sick. The manager of this safety council was also quoted as saying, on TV, violence is passive. In this game, a player takes the first step to creating violence. The player is no longer just a spectator. He's an actor in the process. I assume this guy also didn't let his kids play with G.I. Joes. You know, the little plastic dude with guns, because otherwise he's a massive hypocrite. You probably couldn't hear the screaming of those flattened gremlins over the sound of pearls being clutched. It does seem like Death Chase is a good example of death by media. Despite the company insisting it was a game about killing gremlins, not pedestrians, and the fact that most of the adults were up in arms about it had never played the sodding thing, Exidy did pull it out of circulation as a result of all of the flapping. But not before the game, thanks to all the controversy, did very nicely for Exidy indeed. I don't know, man. I mean, it's a game with a thing. You just get hit by a thing. That's not very controversial, but okay, you do you, I guess. I do try to take into account the culture of the time that these video games were made, but the uproar around Death Race is kind of bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bullshit. I mean, come on. Chiller, though? All right, maybe it is a little bit much. Maybe for very young children. I'm telling you, I would probably have been traumatized by this when I was about seven, because I was a very, very sensitive child. And I probably would have remained traumatized up to about the age of nine, which is when every child becomes a bastard. And then I would have been first in line to play this bad boy. The thing is, even though you'd expect Chilla to have really got people clutching pearls, there doesn't seem to have been that much of an uproar about it. Some of the arcade flyers hint towards there of being one, but... I couldn't find anyone getting all mardy in newspaper letters or anything at the time. This may well be because, as I said earlier, American arcades just didn't really want to buy it, so... Not gonna lie, I'd probably let my kid play this, at least the NES version. Seems kind of harmless to me. Speaking of children, I hope mine's alright. I haven't checked in on him for about... two weeks? I'll be fine. All right, well, that was Chiller then. Should it have been banned? Should it not have been banned? Would you let your child play it? Let me know in the comments, which I will probably read, but will be far, far too anxious to reply to. Well, I'm off then. Make sure you get the return filled, otherwise I'll have to come back next month. Oh, and I'll be emailing you a feedback form. Please do make sure you fill it out. Oh, okay, great. Uh, where do you want me to post it to? Oh, just print it out and send it to the standard government HMRC address. We'll get it eventually. Okay, cool. Drive safely. All right, bye then. Toodles. That cat suit does not suit her at all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe. And if you feel like it, share it with your friends or people who you think might enjoy this kind of gubbins that I'm doing. You guys are awesome, fantastic, lovely. I love you. Bye.